Well, hello, 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 Bethel family. So good to, uh, to join with you again. I want to encourage, I know that there are people watch on a weekly basis that don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. You know what? This is a time just to wake up to the fact we all need a Savior. We do. And Jesus is the only one, the Son of God, who died in our place that we would know salvation. We would know what it meant to be a part of the family of God that we would know what it meant to be forgiven of sin and then to live representing him in this world, loving and caring for people. Anyway, I just want to encourage you, uh, whether you're on YouTube or Bethel TV, there are pastors there ready to talk with you, pray for you. Uh, if you need a miracle in your body, whatever it is, they're there and ready to go. So welcome, welcome. Listen, yesterday I had... Um, I, I, I'm supposed to be speaking today. I'm going to postpone what I was going to do for next week. But I had this impression when I woke up that I should uh, have Brian uh, speak into what's happening with this, uh, this virus and all the stuff that, we, that we've got going on. But I also, in talking with him, knowing it's unfair for him to have to prepare a message with such short notice. So the thought was, is to take this time just to have a conversation on the role of worship in crisis. Because we've all gone through it. We've all gone through hellish situations, and we've, we've learned the beauty, the wonder of coming before the Lord in the most challenging circumstances and giving him praise. So this is what I want to do. I believe that today the Lord is going to give an impartation for worship now, we love to worship here, and our corporate gatherings are, are just, uh, is, I'd rather be here than anywhere in the world. I'm biased, of course, but it's true. But the corporate worship is built upon what happens at home. And it's not that we have big sound systems, it's that we have a heart that is yielded and surrendered. So, Brian, my first question to you, just, just give me, uh, tell me why you think worship, or is worship important in the middle of crisis, and if so, why? Oh, I th of course, I think it's, I mean, my own story is different seasons of crisis. And, and I think it's like a, a blessing in disguise because when you're brought to your end, yeah. you know, and everyone experiences that in life, where they're, especially right now where there's this like so many questions and everyone has opinions, but no one really knows what's real, what's truth anymore. And you just, and it brings you to this point in life where it's like, you know, I know God's good. I know God's faithful. He knows the answers. And when you actually identify with that and step into that and go, I, all, my role now, because I've had this revelation that I actually don't know what the heck I'm doing, which is just so, it's so simple, yeah. is to worship, is to praise. And so, I mean, I think it's it's everything. And a lot of times these these crisis or whatever, you know, um, not that God causes them, but it, it brings us to a place of, Maybe, um, maybe real worship's not the right word, but but it feels like a bit a bit more messy and raw, and you don't care as much about all the the peripherals, all the extra. You just care about connecting with God, yeah. and so to me, it's it's worship is super important because also like, and we know that when we step into and actually start that process of surrender yeah. and worship and bowing before Him, bowing our hearts before Him. Um, doing what he wants us to do, doing what he says, becoming a friend of God, spending time with him, and then lifting up a song of praise. It's like the heavens are opened over us. It's like God's like, oh, there's one right there that's, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and then I think that revelation starts to pour in for the conflict, for the crisis that we're in. And so we don't worship to get the answer, but in that place of worship. And, and I think that like there's different... Um, Thoughts on what is worship, what's praise, how do I praise, do I shout, do I dance, you know, what, you know, when you're in crisis, none of you, that kind of goes back here and you like do whatever, exactly. right? Exactly. And so um, I think that it's two-parted. I think revelation comes for the crisis that you're in. Um, the answers come, the blessing comes, the favor comes, but you got to step through that. Oh, wait, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to sing. <laughs> sing yourself into freedom. I'm really, really like... Seeing yourself in a freedom, even if you don't feel like it, wow. thank you. You just start singing or start to start. You know, I, I do this thing where I am, um, if I am anxiety or whatever, um, and a lot of my stuff is just post, you know, post 
from what I dealt with, you know, if I have a hard time breathing or whatever, I'll start a uh, run now and I have my iPods and I put my worship yeah, playlist yeah. on. And I've noticed just by playing worship music, not even singing, just playing worship music. And by the end of my, my runs, I'm like, look, it's interesting. It's beautiful. There's something, something happened, you know. <laughs> so. that's, that's impossible to explain how, yeah, you can put, how you can put something out. Yesterday, uh, Mom and I put on uh, God of Revival. Yeah. And uh, we thank you for the cross. Yeah. And put one on my iPad, we thank you for the cross. And then we thought, let's just put God of Revival on our big screen TV, the surround sound and the, the Bethel Music uh, channel on, on YouTube. I'm telling you, it just wrecked me. Wow. I, just, I just was a mess. Wow. Just, just looking, you know, because what happens is it's not only the moment that, that you have with the Lord, but it triggers your history with God. You know, yeah. the times we've sung that here with a crowd of people or elsewhere and how God has moved through that song and what he's been doing in our lives for these years. When you sing that song, it's almost, it's like you're singing, it's like you're singing from your history with his faithfulness. Oh man, it just, uh, it messes me up. You, you mentioned something, uh, you used a word, you said, when you come to that place of surrender in worship, connect the dots for me on that one. Cause I, I really feel like that's, that's it right there. Well, I, th I mean, it's so, everyone's different. Everyone has these things. It's like, like for me, it's like the, uh, the surrender and worship, like I was saying, you, you, I think you get to a point where you're like, I, there's like a, a phrase that I, we, we've used a bunch where when God becomes your only option, consider it a gift. That's, when God becomes your only option. It's like, it's say, it, say it again. Consider it a gift when, um, God becomes your only option. So there's all these things in life that happen where nothing else is working or has worked and you're at your, and a lot of people are there right now, like yeah, they're at their end, right, whether it's business, right. the economy, the, the, the fear, the terror. Some of that stuff's just unexplainable. And I know what it feels like to be in that like frozen state of like yeah. panic. I either want to die or God, you have to step in. You know, that, that type of thing. And there's a, a moment, a special yeah. moment, right? Where okay, you surrender and, and whatever that looks like, right? It's, and sometimes it's not even surrendering a thing or it's just, I don't even know what that is right now. I just surrender and I'm going to start worshiping. Basically giving the adoration, giving the, the worship back to him that yeah. maybe you've been giving to something else. And um, I think in that surrender, all sorts of stuff happens. I mean, like David's life when he surrendered, even when he messed up and then he re-surrendered. Yep. It's like God is waiting with the blessing and all the favor and the revelation. And we don't surrender for that, but it's just a part of it. So, Yep. yep. I, I was reading a verse before uh, the meeting today, and it says, uh, Why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. What I found interesting is this word disturb means one of the ways it's translated is to murmur. Why are you murmuring, O oh my soul? And that, uh, that kind of inner language thing really causes us problems when, when we're in stress. I mean, it's the complaining uh, sometimes to God, sometimes about people, sometimes about circumstances, sometimes about you know, politics or whatever it might be, but that murmuring thing here really infects our worship. Yeah. How have you dealt with that? Well, I, like, I mean, for me lately, honestly, it's, it's, it, every season is different, but like I, like I was saying, when I, um, whether anxiety creeps upon me or I just feel like, you yeah. know, like my wife, she knows, like, if I go for a run, <laughs> then it, you know what I mean? Go f That's a good idea. You can tell, like, I think I'm going to run. That's a good idea. <laughs> Not, well, it's two part because she wants me to be in shape. And the other part is she knows that in when shape. that happens, yeah. something happens. Yeah. Other, you know, so um, well, for me, it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of times, and I think there's a lot of people that feel like they maybe they don't have the strength or even the willpower to lift up a song of praise or do whatever. But for me, and when I push, put worship music on and start singing, I almost am sung into a position where I can just start. And then I'll start, it's funny, I'll just start like from going from, I'm on a defense, you know, murmuring in a defensive posture to what, like I'm off social media now, you know, there's, I'm just, I'm over it. <laughs> in a defensive 
position, but when I, by the end of my run, I find myself in an offensive position, and I'm starting to pray for different things, Beautiful. and I'm like declaring things, Beautiful. and I'm like, I'm like, oh wait a second. So I went and I I started this run in this position, and I'm ending the run in like I'm like praying for things, and the Holy Spirit is now revealing yep. things, and so for me in this specific season, um, it's really simply just having my worship playlist. That's my like start. I just turn it on. So I would encourage people. That's good. You know, like like it's kind of like when they were going to be facing the, the other army and and they got the word to send their praisers out. You know, it's like really like that doesn't seem like a. And and for me, it's like the simple little steps of like yeah, okay, yeah. I'm just going to turn the worship music on, and I know through that. So that's what I've been doing. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it hasn't. I I do have my guitar out, and I've got my little studio and problem with me is whenever I get my guitar out, I start writing a song. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like yeah. for me, it's like, yeah. uh, I'll just put worship music on it. And, you know, so I would encourage people just to play That's worship good. music and you'll find that it really makes a difference. That's so you, you, you mentioned uh, at the beginning of the run, it's kind of defensive by the end. You're praying for other stuff. Um, I was thinking of phrases this morning uh, when we, Eric and I were here early to pray. Uh, intercessory worship, intercessory worship. I, I, I'm not sure if that's a legitimate phrase, but I think you know what I mean. I think it's, I think it's what IHOP has done so well with the harp and bowl. It's the, the ministry to the Lord, but it's also the intercessor. What do you find happening in your own, your own ability to pray into things, maybe that aren't even uh, concerning you? You know, where you start remembering a friend that's in trouble or you, you start thinking about our government or whatever it might be. You start praying into that in an in a influential way. How does that happen? What, what, what transpires in your heart to go from encountering God in worship to making a difference? I, I, don't, I think this, I'll just read this. I was thinking about this. Um, it, what, I think what happens is, so there's, but the moment, and this is about salvation, I think, in the Holy Spirit revealing things. But the moment one turns to the Lord with an open heart, it says the veil is lifted and they see. So I think it's connected to a surrender. I think it's connected to that moment of surrender, that, that, that thing where you're like, you know what, Lord? Like, whether it's finances, whether it's whatever. All right, God. You know, like, I'm just, I just, do you know what I mean? Yeah. This is yours. Yeah. It's, it says, and, and you, know, you know how people, oh, that's out of context. Well, okay. The, the context is when we turn our hearts to God with an open heart, the veil is lifted and we see, and now the Holy Spirit um, brings freedom. And so I think it's in that moment of surrender that we turn from the defense into the offensive. And, and it's that harp and bull. It's like, you, you said, if, if I have 10 minutes to spend time with God, it's been eight. You know, lots of people say this, eight yeah. in worship and two in, in that offensive yeah, posture. Because exactly. I get, I feel like I get, um, for me, I get into a head space or a heart space where I f have faith. I actually am excited and have belief and faith again yep, yep. to go, you know what, I'm going to, I feel like the Holy Spirit brought this up. I'm going to go after this thing. Yep. And um, so I think it's faith, too, that, that rises up. Um, but I think it's just connected to that. Let's give the reference on that. It so is, uh, it's 2 Corinthians. I, I'm reading the Passion Translation. It's 2 Corinthians 3, verse 16 through 17. Read it again. It says, but the moment one turns to the Lord with an open heart, the veil is lifted and they see. Now the Lord I'm referring to is the Holy Spirit. And wherever he is, Lord... Wherever he's Lord over us, there is freedom. And um, when there's freedom, I think it's like the domino effect of all this. It's beautiful. Things. It's beautiful. Uh, one of the things that I've not thought through before, but I think you hit uh, exactly right, is that in worship, you find yourself believing God. I mean, it shouldn't surprise us, but specifically, you said faith. Faith becomes activated in this place. I think it's partly because of surrender. Faith is not the product of striving which gets us into trouble. Faith is the result of surrender. And so here we are in this place of worship where we just, we just choose not to worry and fret and complain and murmur and do all that stuff, but turn our attention towards him. We find ourselves believing. What, how does that happen for you? Do you recognize it happening? Or does it just happen? Well, I think some, a lot of times it, it, the, the belief and the faith 
comes right after I feel like the Holy Spirit spoke okay. or revealed okay. something. Because yep. for me, it's like you said it lightly, but God is real thing. And I'm like, I mean, let's be real. Like sometimes when, when things are so crazy, it's like every, we question everything. And, I, and I'm not talking about like um, we all, you know, some people question if God's real or not, even in this pandemic. But um, it's, it's really interesting when... I'm trying to remember the question because I started going off on a rabbit trail yeah. thinking about that Just subject. the connection of faith as a result of worship. And how do you, how do you, how do you recognize when that happens? Okay, the pre it, it have after I feel like the Holy, Holy Spirit speaks yes, with yes, me. Because yeah. then it reminds me that he's for me. He's close. He's on my side. Oh, okay. He's, when the Holy Spirit is speaking, it's like God is good. But when he's speaking, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. It's yeah. just when God is speaking and he's always speaking. And then that thing rises up, and it's like, okay. That's awesome. That's right. That's awesome. Okay. Everything's going to be okay. And when I know everything's going to be okay inside, all that other stuff goes away, and I can actually move into yep. a position of faith and believe again. It's, and I will say this, and I said it earlier, but I'm, I've gotten off social media. I post, but for three weeks I've been off. And, and it's kind of crazy. Like, I don't usually just tell people, you should do this too, but... but um, I was getting so bombarded for a long season. When I got off that, it's, it feels like, because I don't even know what's going on with a lot of things, <laughs> I find myself being able to hear God, but more. Wow. wow. And, and not be convoluted by, and, and I believe this. It's like every day the media is throwing out agenda. Every day, every, five times a day, it's like, here, now all of you, they're, they're controlling what we talk about and what we think about whether good or bad or whether we believe it or not, they're controlling us like little it's guinea true. pigs. It's true. And when we step out of that, it's literally like <laughs> the, the air over me wow. went to, it kind of feel like it used to feel. And so what that tells me is, and I'm not talking about ignore. Sometimes it's good to ignore things, <laughs> but I'm talking about what God is saying and what he has in store for us in the future is good. Yes, yes. And when we remove ourselves from all that chaos and we can actually feel and hear that, it's like, okay, then now that I can actually do something with my faith. And so I've been have I've been on that journey. It's been really interesting. That's good. So, That's so good. I don't know what to what if what to do with that, but just don't stop. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah. I like what you read. This is a fascinating concept in Scripture <clears throat> that when they turned to the Lord, their eyes were opened. It doesn't say their eyes were opened and then they turned to the Lord. They had to have enough conviction in their heart without clarity of sight to just abandon themselves to God. Then things opened. It's, a, it's an unusual sequence of events that is essential. It's the surrender, and then you see. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't work to persuade us. Why do we forget that God's for us? How come? What, hap what happens that makes us forget? Well, I think, uh, you know, when we don't have to, I think, I think for me, <clears throat> for me, lazy, spiritual laziness, you know, you know how it is when you're like, I'm gonna get up every day and I'm gonna just pursue God and I've got this whole thing, and it's like, ah, oh, and, then, and then it gets easy again, and it's like, ah. Wow. And then we get kind of spiritually lazy because the, the pressure's not as much. And then right now it's like we can't avoid the pressure. It is everywhere. Yeah. It's yeah. chaotic. Yeah, it's it chaos. Is. And so we kind of have one option. Yep. And the church has always thrived in chaos when the world's in chaos because partly it's like foreign countries. It's like they have one option. It's faith. Yep, yep. And um, I think part of it is that, but um, I forget the question, but. Uh, yeah, you answered it. Okay. You did a good job. Um, <clears throat> we've talked about this before, all of us as a team, the mental battle, the battle is always in the mind in every season. It's, it's never, it never changes. But when things are going on like they are right now, and partly stirred up through social media, but just the circumstances, forget all that, just, just the pandemic, just the conflict, uh, and I don't mean even political conflict, I mean the decisions that our leaders are having to make and, and how to go about life and how to restore business, all that. So we got stuff swirling all around us. 
why is, why is the mental battle such a challenge? And how does worship fix that? Well, I think, like, I think it's spiritual. If there's real things that are natural, and then there's spiritual. It's all bombarding, and it's hard to even know what's spiritual, what's warfare, what's whatever right now. Right, and so right. I think worship is, it, it elevates, it, it's, it, it surpasses our mind. It, 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 I don't, it does this magical thing where it resets <clears throat> our mind. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. in, there's, you know our, our minds are, are, can be scary. <laughs> but there's a re- there's a thing that happens where it's like a surge of like um, a reset where when we worship God promises us peace when we worship He promises to come yeah. when we and when when there when He comes all of those things fall into place our mind our spirit our body you know uh, sometimes our bodies are so out of whack for lack of presence of God you know yeah. and um all of those things fall into place when we are in a position or a place of worship, um, whether in our hearts or, and, and, but I'll never, you know, some, for me, like music, worship music, music and worship connected, yep. it just does something. It's, it's, I'm not talking about just even a heart of worship without music, but God decides, has decided to connect like his presence, yeah. that revelatory thing in music. Yeah. And, you know, you can find it throughout the, or throughout the Bible, but he's decided to do that and give us that gift. And so for me, obviously, person, I've given my life to it. I use music a lot. Like David played over Saul. He didn't yep. even sing. He played over Saul, and it drove the demon away. There's something wow. powerful wow. when we use music in worship. Yep. And so um, for me, I use music in worship to get me out of that. Yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, <clears throat> I think it's probably a, a favorite psalm for both of us. Psalm 73 talks about yes. all these pang, no pangs in her birth and just ongoing moaning and groaning because the sinners get away with everything and the righteous don't. And he's, he's, he's moaning for like 16 verses. And then verse 17, he says, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood therein. Then I saw the outcome of all their decisions. There's something about being in that encounter with the Lord that brings clarity to everything else, yeah. everything else. Yeah. I had uh, an, a, an encounter with the Lord towards the end of last year, uh, end of November, 1st of December, <clears throat> that I've spoken about here. But in this encounter, uh, several things happened, but two of the things that I came out with is that I felt like the Lord strongly impressed on my heart that a key to mental health was giving thanks in everything. A key to emotional health was to rejoice always. Both giving thanks and rejoicing before the Lord are expressions that we have in our worship ministry, in our worship encounter with God. So there's something that happens in our own minds, in our own brains, a reset that he talks about here in Psalm 73. A reset. And... Um, I think the phrase that I've heard maybe the most often concerning this, <clears throat> this pandemic is that there is a global reset going on. And so as a church, as the people of God, we need to cooperate with God's intent to give us a reset to see things from his, from his presence, to see everything differently. Talk to me about the importance of thanksgiving and what do you do do, do you do things just uh, intentionally to think, meditate on things to be thankful for? What, what do you do in that regard? Well, I think it's like faith. Everything, everything in worship and praise, everything, it's faith. The root of it's faith. It's belief. It's believing God no matter what. And so Thanksgiving right. is just another way of going. And, and I, 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 Thanksgiving um, is, it seems so, I think to a lot of people, it seems so, dumb it seems so uh, like oh yeah when I'm five I learned about that but if if we are thankful in every circumstance find something to be thankful of it's crazy it, it, and it, it's a real thing that that it, it like you said talking about the reset it like the mental illness thing yeah, yeah. 
there's there's some there's been moments <clears throat> recently where I've just went down the road of oh my goodness Lord I'm thank I'm thankful for this and I'm, you start going oh that and that and oh wait a second wow. why am I so so wow. it's almost like you start down the road of thankfulness and you'll find yourself again it's just like worship you find yourself again in a position where you have perspective yep. um, his perspective again yep. and like Jen and I we do that we're like we're, you know we've ha- had it's hard to explain we've had uh, um, an eight year <clears throat> process of building the house and the property and a lot of times you know you, you get what you pay for when you jump into something like that congratulations yep. you decided to do something that was kind of impossible you're going to have you know, stuff that's going to come against you but um we, you know, we'll have days where, like, both washing machines go out, all the, all the sand from the filtering system f- ruined every appliance in the house, every faucet, everything, and it's a two-day, they come in, and then, and then this over here happens. You know, it's just like, yeah, yeah. it's just, it's like humorous, uh, uh, and it's happened a million times. And you're just like, but we always do that, me, Jen and I. But you know what? She goes, there's people over here in the world that, are dealing with this, and you're like, oh, wow, okay. And then we start going down the road of thankful. You know, it's amazing. I'm so thankful for our kids. Our kids are doing really well right now. Um, uh, You know, this and that and that, and I'm so thankful that we've got this thing over here that God is putting favor on. And and when we find ourselves in a different headspace by just voc, and it sounds so stupid, but we're just vocalizing it, letting it come out of your mouth. Wow. Something happens. Yeah, you're right. I think mental illness. I think, you know, I think the 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 name it and claim it, the faith. They're on to something. When you say it, yeah, you kind of start to believe it. It's an it's an inter- interesting thing that happens. Yeah, you know, well, what I mean? the scripture says, yeah. "Let the weak say, I am strong." It's there's something about making the proclamation that is contrary to your natural train of thought. It's not it's not magical. It's not mind over matter kind of a thing. It's it's coming into alignment with the heart of God. Come into alignment with the heart of God. He says you're strong. You know, he shows up to Gideon, yep. uh, you know, and he calls him a strong man, a mighty warrior. And Gideon's going, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen me? Yeah. I'm 12. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so let's move to the second part. Emotional health is connected to rejoicing in all things. And some things are, I mean, let's be honest. Uh, we have people watching that have lost loved ones to this virus. We have uh, people watching that spent 30 years building a business that has now, it's now gone. Um, Really tough situations out here. Um, um, Rejoice in all things. It still says to rejoice in all things. You you don't get to choose the circumstances. You get to choose how you're going to respond. In what way has rejoicing changed things for you in oh. tough things? Oh. Well, I think we all have had <clears throat> moments in our lives where we've had the option to sink into <laughs> whatever it is, and then God knows what the outcome would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and we've seen it in people that have chosen that, and it's, or to rejoice. So for me, I think it saved probably my marriage. It saved my life. It's probably saved multiple things. Wow, wow. Because you know there's those moments where you're in that... <clears throat> Um, you know, that moment of just like, I'm going to give into it or I'm going to choose to rejoice. So for me, I would believe it's life and death, I think, you yeah. know. Um, and I can think of moments that that happened, and I'm sure everyone else can. Um, but, but I do think the, the, the continuing of rejoicing always, always, that always word, mm-hmm. that's the hard part. <laughs> Because yeah. even though you overcome one thing and because you've rejoiced and you got through it, things are going to come. There's more stuff that's going to be coming down the road that are out of our control. And um, I mean, I can even I can even think of uh, um, there's been some moments where even with the the house stuff that we've doing that that I I believe that because you know we've chosen to take the low road in a couple circumstances and. and still believe and rejoice, I think God's brought favor to us. So I think favor is a big part of it. Yeah. Um, the, we, a lot of us want favor, you know. We want, yeah. like, the business that's failed, you know. Yeah. Well, I think that God has a second chapter for those people yes. um, in life that possibly might have interest involved. 
yeah. like yeah, yeah. bigger and better. Hey, yeah. I hey, think man. God is yeah. always into growth and it, with interest, and it's going to be you know the seven times more. But I think that walking through that with rejoice always gets us to His promise, which is better than what we're even in now. That's huge. So I think a lot of people right now could <clears throat> succumb to that reality that they lost everything, or this this is real, what happened, but if they can hang on to that word and, and rejoice through it, I think that God's favor is waiting for them yeah. at the other end of that. Yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> some years ago, uh, started learning this, this concept, this phrase, faith does not deny the existence of a problem. It denies the problem a place of influence. And so if somehow we could learn to turn the rejoice button on and never turn it off. In other words, let that learn to let that be our initial reaction to a difficulty that I'm going to celebrate the goodness of God in this. Never forget the goodness of God. For me, it's the goodness of God is the cornerstone of everything. It's the non-negotiable. And if I can keep that in focus, then it will define how I respond to situations. So our our devotional life, our rejoicing, our giving thanks, our times of worship, um, the decisions we make to turn to the word in crisis, all those things come out of a burning conviction that God is good. He is absolutely good always. And uh, and it's not negotiable. It's not negotiable. I have to to somehow learn to live from that one thing. I have felt during this, um, in fact, I was just telling Eric this morning, the uh, Valley of Dry Bones, you know, in uh, Ezekiel, that the, the prophet was to prophesy to the four winds and there would be life come. I just want to declare, I, I believe that there are certain businesses that look beyond saving. There are certain marriages that look beyond the ability to reconcile. There are certain lost conditions, children who have walked away with the Lord from the Lord that are so far gone, maybe some even in a vegetative state because of a drug overdose or whatever, None of those things are outside of God's reach. And I feel like we are supposed to prophesy and declare to the four winds, bring the restoration of God, bring the healing of God to these impossible situations. I want to move towards uh, closing this. And I want, to, I want to run off that because at the beginning you talked about worshiping and coming into this place where you're not now just in a defensive posture, but you're now in the aggressive posture. Do you find yourself making decrees and declarations? I mean, not just petitions, but actually declaring stuff. How does that, what does that look like for you? Well, I think it's connected to a a belief and a feeling the Holy Spirit speaking something into something, bringing someone to my mind so that I would turn into, you know, turn into prophesy. I I just speak this over this thing. I speak, you know, um, Say, say it one more time. Yeah. It was just, you come into this place from defense to offense, and you move into an intercessory thing where you're praying, but do you find yourself declaring, oh, yeah. prophesying 100%. over people? Yeah, and yeah. that, well, that, to me, that's the final. Exactly. That's the finish line. That's, that's the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're welcome. You should have just said it. No, yeah. that, no. That, no, no yeah. you, you find no, yourself that's right. in, a, in, a, in a position of... It's almost like a gift where you're like, an hour ago, I was totally yeah, not even yeah. close to there. Exactly. Questioning everything. And now I'm in this like Superman posture. How did that happen? Yeah. If you connect the dots, it's like, oh my goodness, it's all the things we've been talking about. And I think God's desire for us is to live in this it is. posture. That's so exactly, 100%. That's exactly right. Well, I want to ask if you would pray over uh, the watching audience, uh, Bethel TV, YouTube. And I, I want specifically, I want you to pray for, you know, the Lord's, you know, when, when, you, when you go through pain, you go through difficulty, and you come out on the other side through yieldedness, surrender, you actually have an authority. You may not feel powerful sometimes, but you have an authority. And you, you have an authority in this area. I've watched our different members of our team who have gone through hell and high water, but they've come out celebrating the goodness and the kindness of God. They've come out with authority. And you have that. And I want you to pray just a real mantle of anointing for worship in houses, in homes, that our homes would be filled with the light, the fire, the presence of God. Yeah, do that, would you please? Well, we just speak over everyone that's listening right now. 
for the authority yes. from God. Yes, God. With worship and song and music and surrender and all those things, praise, the high praise of God in the household. And um, I just see even right now, like there's children that God is putting this mantle on. Yeah. Wow. Come on. Yeah. In this, in this pause season, in this reset season. Yeah. That, um, and, and maybe it might even be through the parents taking on this posture putting on worship music for the first time and God using that to anoint and put a mantle on children for praise, the, all the Judas in the world. Yeah. And um, yeah. I just speak, up, uh, I speak that authority that even if it's a simple song, an out of tune song, mm -hmm. it doesn't, none of that matters in this, in regard to what we're talking about, but an authority for praise that moves mountains, that shakes the heavens, that actually causes change. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it's for your business, for your family dynamic, for stress, anxiety, for all the different things, sickness, that music and worship, those connected things would cause such change and drastic um, measures that you would be surprised Yes. That God used that. And so we just release that. And, and I do really just pray over all the Judas, all the, all the praisers right now, all the young people yeah. and old, yeah. that, you're, that you're putting your hand of anointing on like you did David. You know, David was out with the sheep and you put your hand of anointing on his life. And I pray that right now in this reset, in this pause, at this incubation wow. period where wow. you would be anointing and calling people out. People that were going one direction now are going to be going a different direction almost because they had to stop and you're doing a reset, and we just speak that Amen. over everyone watching. Amen. That's, that's a very powerful prophetic decree over our children and young people, all of us, actually. But I, I, I think you hit something there, that the Lord is doing a reset as it pertains to recognizing and living from the actual presence of God. So we bless you in Jesus' name. We're so glad you joined us. And I want to encourage you once again, we have... Pastors on call, uh, online, uh, both Bethel TV, YouTube, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to him with whatever issues you have, and let's watch the love of God touch and transform your life. We bless you in Jesus' name. Thanks for joining us.